Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome back to Zebra Force. Today, I thought it might be a good idea to start going through some of the project files for the songs that were released over the last few months uh, for my monthly EP project that I'm doing. I only recently started documenting the creation process and uploading these videos to YouTube. So I thought maybe I should still make videos about some of these older songs that have been out for a little bit and uh, go through sounds, tones, thought processes, lyrics, that sort of thing. Yeah, let's do it. Today, I'm going through Stone Cold Killer. I've been asked by a few people if I did anything to my voice here, if there was like any sort of pitch shifting or anything. This is actually my voice here. I swear, that is me just, I'm a stone cold killer, not a bottle of I just performed it really high up. I can even, uh, let's get rid of this whole chain here. This is it raw. I'm a stone cold killer, nothing but a feeling. I am a stone cold killer. Now, it was really difficult for me to perform it that high, so I did use uh, auto tune on it to just keep it in key. And then, um, other than the usual EQ compression, uh, I've got delays running here, doing some width stuff, and um, some automated EQ, especially in this intro. And that's it for that intro vocal. This whoa stack, whoa. it's literally just me performing it a, a couple of times, getting the best takes, and then I added a bunch of saturation to it to make it sound a little bit bigger. Um, there, there's really not that much saturation, but it is on uh, like every channel here. There's compression. Oh, maybe not actually. It's not on the individual channels. And then those are tuned so that I can get a nice clean stack of vocal takes there. And also in this intro, we've got this stock Ableton kit here, a uh, chromatone kit preset. And the EQ here is being automated to give it some motion. Once the verse comes in, I am using Addictive Drums 2 on the, let's see, it's just a Fairfax Volume 1 Neutral Kit. Uh, everything is being sent out to this drum group which has all the individual stems being, it looks like, not processed at all, aside from the hi-hat there and uh, the room and overhead. Drum group, I am using Slam Pup. This is one of my favorite ways to just get a little bit of extra juice out of some drums, especially on um, something like addictive drums or real drums, where it's uh, a live drum set sound. And I really like the way that Addictive Drums and the MIDI, uh, what is it called, the Chromatone kit, I really like the way that these play off of each other. It's nice because you get the room sound of the real, well, quote unquote real drum set, but you also get that digital attack from the, the electronic kit. Love doing that. Sounds great. This bass sound is Anna 2 on the 3 oscillator glide preset. Uh, I don't think I changed anything here, but this was a long time ago. There could be some edits made to the actual synth. And then I've got it side-chained to the Chromatone electronic kit, some compression, OTT, which is not doing anything right now uh, because it's broken right now. I, I don't, don't know what happened to it. Um, I'm assuming that it wasn't broken <laughs> when I produced the song, otherwise it wouldn't be here. Some automated EQ, which is, let's see what this is doing. Um, this is just for the intro so that we get a nice little motion coming into this verse. And um, that is it. I think there's some automation here in the intro. Yep, we've got 
uh, some right and left motion going on. And uh, that's it for the bass tone. That's it for that bass tone, I should say, because I also have a sub bass. You might not even be able to hear that if you're watching on a phone or something with not a lot of bass presence in the speakers, uh, but this is carrying a lot of the low end. I've got just the stock Ableton hip hop sub bass with some automation on the distortion. We've got this nice little sawtooth thing going on here. I'm a stone cold killer, killer, killer. I'm a stone cold. It just kind of opens it up while that section is going with just the one note, adds some interest to a single note. And then I've also got it over here. And of course, side chained to the appropriate drum channels here so that we get a nice bump. And uh, it looks like we've got a chorus here that is automated. Uh, just turns off at one point in the song. Nothing too special there. I've got a little bit of automation on the uh, dry wet knob for this chorus so that it transitions nicely. And that's it for bass. I guess I had two other potential bass <laughs> sounds here because they're, the channels are here, but they're not being used. Let's just delete those, shall we? Okay, moving on. I think one of my favorite parts of this song is the vocal processing. I have a lot of layers going on here. Let's just uh, solo this group. Tough boy in a poor spot, got a little bump like a rock star. It's everything a woman needs. So we've got this main vocal here. Tough boy in a poor spot, got a little bump like a rock star. And although I'm not singing many notes during these parts, I did tune it just to make sure that all of these stacks were really, really locked in with each other. Aside from that, compressor, good old slam pup, and a chorus on this main vocal here. Then I have a left and a right version. Tough boy in a poor spot, got a little tough boy in a poor spot, got a little bump like a rock star. And they're basically doing the same thing, just adding a little bit of depth. My favorite part, though, is this the low low channel. It's everything a woman needs. Which is, of course, just this pitched down. It's everything a woman needs. I guess I am kind of singing these these parts, but I remember it not really needing a lot of tuning. I was just feeling like it matched the song a lot. A lot of the time when I'm doing something big like like this, where I'm adding a lot of vocal tracks on top of each other, I like to tune them even if I'm just tuning a little bit. In this case, the effect is there and it's prominent, but even if it were... Uh, something that was not so electronic of a song, I would still want to tune these just to make sure that they are a little bit tighter. You don't have to tune for the auto-tune effect, although I did turn it up a little bit just so I could have a little bit of that nice electronic sound to it. Everything about the dream. I'm a stone cold killer. I'm a stone Continuing on with the vocal group. I'm a stone cold killer, killer, killer. I'm a stone cold what? This is just that same high pitched performance that I used in the intro. I'm a stone cold killer, killer. Uh, on top of this. I'm a stone cold killer, killer. Which is obviously just in my normal register. One of my favorite parts about this section on the vocals is this delay that's automated. I loved the way that. Uh, the delay sounded, but I kind of wanted it to be a little bit tighter and not continue throughout the entire line. So I automated it to only turn on when the vocals weren't 
running. I'm a stone cold killer, killer, killer. I'm a stone cold what? I'm a stone cold killer, killer, killer. I'm a stone cold what? And it just adds a little bit of tightness that I really appreciate. In this chorus, we also add in this Bonzo kit, which is another stock Ableton drum kit. That's where those snaps come from. And then to transition into this next section, we've got some synths that start going off here. Favorite part of the song right there, guaranteed. That is my favorite. This high synth, unfortunately, I don't know exactly what synth I was using here because I froze and, and flattened it, but I can tell that it was an Anna 2 preset because of the clip name right here. So uh, you can go through all of those presets and find what was closest because I don't think that I did much custom sound design for that. Then we've got the piano. Just adding a little bit of padding to everything. This is an Anna 2 preset. Again, one of my favorite synths. I've been using it for a little while. This is the Bellish Piano. And here are my settings. Not sure if anything was changed from the stock preset there. Then we have this car horn. I think it's such an ugly sound, but it works so well in context here. And that's it for this whole instrumental break section. Rough sex with the lights on, sweating out the heat with the love drugs. For the second verse, I wanted to really drop the energy. I think it's one of my favorite songwriting tips to make the second verse way less energetic than the first. Uh, even if you have a third, I think that's just generally a good spot in the song to dial things back a little bit. I moved the moving chords thing that we had over here on this piano, I moved that to this tinier sound. And that is the 60 list preset. We've also got this pad, which is the lost tape pad preset with a little bit of reverb. Yes, I use a lot of presets. They're there for a reason. Use them, find the ones that you like, and tweak what you don't like about the sound. That's my personal opinion. A lot of people get up in arms about using presets, but uh, they make my life easy, so why would I not use them if they're good? You know, sometimes there's some pretty bad ones out there, but I actually really enjoy the majority of the presets on the Anna 2 synth, and I think that's why I've been using that synth for a little while, because it just makes it super easy. Not that I dislike doing sound design at all, but... Listen, I make an EP a month. I gotta simplify the process somehow, right? Something I really love about this verse is the uh, the lower overdub track that I have. Rough sex with the lights on, sweating out the heat with the love drug. You can hardly even tell what the words are when you're just solo listening to that low track, but dubbed with the other tracks it sounds great together rough sex with the lights on sweating out the heat with the love drug clarity until the drop poof gone right. i think it all works really well together and this is the only time i think that i actually pitched up any of my vocals the intro and that other spot that i mentioned those were just me performing it in a higher uh, pitch but this i did actually pitch up. Rough 
Sounds absolutely terrible on its own, but together sounds great. Blended in with this right here, this bridge vocal. Rough sex with the lights on, sweating out the heat with the love drug, clarity until the drop. I think it adds uh, a lot to have these three working in tandem. Rough sex with the lights on, sweating out the heat with the love drug. Then uh, we bring back the Bonzo kit. What else do we have here? I think that's it up until this little riser. Love this little guy. Got some chorus, some reverb on it. Um, I'm not sure what the original sound was, but I, I'm I'm fairly certain that this was a more continuous riser, and then I used the Ableton Beats warp setting to get that like steady. Then we move on to this little pause where we had that uh, distortion automation uh, on the bass, on the sub bass, and we bring in the guitar with the drop. Tough boy in a poor spot, got a little bump like a rock star. It's everything a woman needs. I really like this guitar line. I'm very happy with it particularly because it's super, super simple, and it's doing a lot. I'm a big fan of guitar that is tasteful and just kind of in the background, and this just kind of moves it along. It's very wide. We've got the THU Slate plugin running the amp. Uh, we've got it on solid British rhythm preset. Uh, I'm not sure if I changed anything here. I probably did, but if you would like to copy it, here are all of the settings, nice and zoomed in for you. And I've got the same thing running left and right. One of them obviously has a different tone. This is the cleaner one. And that's it for guitars on the whole song, actually. Um, I didn't mention it over here in the break section, my bad, but it's the same thing, just copied and pasted. And uh, it's also the same thing over here in this outro. I just don't use the distortion. Then for this bridge section, I went a little bit heavier on this Bonzo kit. It's the only drum set that's playing during this section. I wanted to completely change the vibe uh, because I, I felt like it needed a break. <laughs> uh, the, you know, the chorus loop is great. The verse sounds great. I love this song, but it's a little repetitive and I just wanted a nice pause. This used to be half the length that it is now but thanks to playing this for some friends of mine and getting some opinions it was a pretty unanimous decision that th it needed to be the length that it is now so i'm very grateful for my friends opinions because i really like this section now and i think it provides a nice little break Right here, this little vocal transition is super cool. All I did here was chop stone into four different pieces. On this main, I did uh, no pitching for the first two, and then I went down five semitones, and then I went down an octave. On this higher one, I did uh, no pitching on the first one, went down five semitones on the second, 12 on the third, and 12 on the fourth, just to separate the two so they're not doing the exact same thing. And then, uh, of course, the... What? What? I'm still so What? It's super cool, super weird, and it makes the transition very abrupt. One of my favorite parts about this transition is that the next section coming in so abrupt kind of re-excites me to listen to the loop that was needing a break. 
So it's a nice little revitalization there. Everything except for the vocal in this section is copied and pasted. I'm almost positive of it. And this was just a flattened version of the previous chorus. And I took Ableton's Beats Warp Mode. It looks like I used Transients here, but that wouldn't make that rhythm. I think it's just set to that right now, and then I flattened it. A little bit of chorus, compression, and overdrive. And then uh, back to the copied, pasted chorus after this nice little drum beat. Drum fill, excuse me. This was also something that used to be half as long and then through test playing it for some people i was recommended to extend it so i did and i love the way it sounds now super happy with the outcome of this song that wraps it up that's the whole song aside from this reverb send i have here which has a little bit of everything running to it And that just makes it kind of sound like everything is being played in a room a little bit more live. I like to do that when I'm using a lot of electronic sounds because I prefer a little bit more of a band sound. Even though they're all MIDI instruments, they're all electronically made, aside from the guitar and the vocals. It just adds a nice little bit of humanization to it. As far as other mixed things, I've got uh, sibilance on this vocal group, cutting out some of those S's. And we already talked about Slam Pup on the drums, and, and that's it. This, uh, this right here is just for recording this video. That's all. That's Stone Cold Killer. Thank you so much for watching. Please go stream the song. It's on the December EP titled Impetus. You can find the link to listen to it in the description. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.